welcome back to What Are Teen Nibs with General Disturbance. This is the T-95, the Tier 9 American Tank Destroyer. It's located on the northeast wall of Arctic region and it's under the command of Provo Bob. Now, this um, tank destroyer is actually featured in the game twice. In fact, Jingles recently mentioned that in a video he did about the T-28. The T-28 is basically a T-95 without the extra set of tracks. Yes, the T-95's got four sets of tracks, and the uh, T-28's only got two, the one on each side. In fact, actually, if you uh, want to learn more about the T-95, you can actually find out about it in a video that Sophie Line did, and uh, it's a very interesting tank destroyer, this thing, and there's only one example left in the world, and Sophie's done a video of that as well, walking around it. This one, it's got the 155mm gun and it's capable of doing 750 alpha and also penetrating 276mm of armour with standard ammo and with premium it goes up to 320 and that's what Provo Bob's loaded straight away. But it's not a very fast tank destroyer, maximum speed 20km an hour forwards, 10 back, but you can speed that up using the turbocharger. Now it does have a couple of glaring weak spots. Right on top of the thing, yes, you can see those cupolas. They are fairly, fairly prominent, which makes it easier to hit. And of course, if you can fire between the tracks, you can take out an enemy uh, or take, put a shell into his lower plate. And there is an enemy in front right now. It's a 50 TP. He's poking his nose up to have a look and see if he can hit anything. And he got smacked on the head, but all he got was a critical hit, which I suspect meant that his vision device was knocked out. That was probably very, very close to getting a pen. Okay, nice target here. 257. Oh, Amorak. That turret flew. That's what everyone likes to see. <laughs> you see that turret pop off like that. Hmm, very satisfying indeed. Huge amount of damage. 1,800 hit points with just one shot. Okay, ISU-152. Oh, penetration! And he's completed whatever mission it was that he had to do. It's big game hunting. And that's destroy an enemy heavy tank that's one tier higher than your vehicle. And collect 2,000 hit points of damage to the enemy. And um, Well, he's collected 2,694 so far. Because that last shot was 894 hit points. So he's well ahead now. Okay, he's just at this moment waiting to see what his teammates come up with and then I think he'll move in to finish the enemy off. He could take the point, but I think Provo Bob's being a bit cautious here and sometimes that is warranted because if you go all assault tank, which is what the uh, T-95 and the T-28 were supposed to be, you can come a cropper occasionally because if you get tracked, then the enemy they can get behind you and that rear end of the T-95 and T-28 is very vulnerable. It's got fuel tanks on top which are kind of open and well you don't want to get an enemy behind you so he's letting the his teammates take the, uh, the point and then he'll go in and finish the enemy off once they're ready. Yeah you can see those big rectangular fuel tanks at the back of the vehicle. They are a bit exposed actually. It was a, that was also a bit of a weak point, especially if you were going to hit by uh, Artie. You don't really want to get those fuel tanks hold. The T-28 and the T-95 really were designed not as a tank destroyer, but as to knock down bunkers and emplacements and that sort of thing. Oh, he's just got the corner of that AMX. He'd probably track him not rather than damage him. But he might tempt this Skoda to make a rash decision. Oh, he was lucky as... That guy ought to buy a lottery ticket right now because you'd never be as lucky as that to uh, ricochet a shot 155mm round. Oh, and it looks like uh, the enemy has managed to push our guys back. So now I think Probo Bob needs to pull back and get ready to deal with these guys as they poke their noses up. Okay, hello, who's first for the 155mm? Don't get in the way, Mr. Carnarvon, because you could get badly hurt. 
Okay, he's got a problem with gun depression here, but this is a much better position. Hello, no, again, that line pushes his nose up at that specific point, so he's now reversing to get a better angle. Just quick check to see to the right that nobody's going to shoot him in the side. And that's better. Oh, he just wants to raise his nose a bit more. Bouncing rounds. Nice. That's one good thing the T95 or Doom Turtle is very good at doing. Bouncing rounds from the enemy. Very heavy armor at the front. Nope. Ideally, he should be using the HE rounds at this particular point. If you're just seeing a sliver of the top of the turret, an HE round is still going to wreck them because although it may not kill them, 950 hit points of damage and, of course, HE always damages enemy heavies regardless of whether it pens or not. Okay, these guys jockeying for position, but... So long as the guys to his right keep that 112 at bay. Okay, he's holding these two here. And, oh, it pushes the nose up every time he goes over. But now he's got them. He fires, but he doesn't get any damage. And he should have loaded the HE. And he would have done damage for sure. But now these guys are facing a pen from above. Which is very likely to be pe pe very painful and very sudden. 15 second reload. And one of them's down. Shell went straight in from above and, well, the top armor on these tanks is not very strong. It's normally strong on the front and on the side sometimes. Oh, our, our IS-2 took a round from the enemy, enemy AMX M4. He misses with that shot and now he's going in to try and bully this 60TP. And this is one I mentioned earlier. You don't want to get an enemy who gets behind you. Okay, so he's turning around. That 60, 50 TP rather made a bit of a mistake. He should have just tracked Provo Bob and then he could have taken him out from behind. But as it is, he gets taken out. You see, a very bad, very poor decision making. He should have just sat behind Provo Bob, not letting him pull back. Keep him tracked and just keep pumping those rounds into his rear. With a 15 second reload, there was no way that Provo Bob was going to be able to uh, to actually get it turned around to actually deal with the enemy who was shooting into his ass. But that uh, 50 TP just let him turn around and shoot him. Okay, AMX M449 with very low hit points. I would have loaded the HE at this point because for, for him, anything that touches him is going to end his game. Yeah, you see, he's wasted an APCR round there. And that's an expensive round. If he fired HE, really cheap round, he would have been out the game with the first touch of that shell. Okay, still firing gold at the enemy. Emptying his wallets. Okay, we've got a Scorpion. That's the uh, German tank destroyer. And <laughs> one shot's enough to finish him. But again, the standard round probably would have been enough. And that's it. It's all over. That was it. The last enemy destroyed. And the game is over. So it's a victory. Let's have a look at the end of battle stats. First class tank of a Provo Bob in the T95. He managed to get a demolition expert with his first shot of the game. And he also got a fighter badge for getting at least four kills. He got four exactly. A shell proof for blocking more damage than the hit points of his own vehicle. Julius for taking out two tanks who damaged him. And a fire for effect for doing more damage than the hit points of his own vehicle. And lastly, he got a battle hero medal. He got the high caliber for dealing the most damage in the game. And his win from that one was 5,115, which is super unicum standard. So let's have a look at team score. Well, he got the highest damage for sure, 4,499 hit points, near enough 4,500 hit points of damage. The next highest scorer being that 50 TP who made a very bad decision, he got 2,558, but he would have taken out Provo Bob if he'd sat behind him, kept him tracked and pumped those rounds into the rear. So bad choice by him. When it came to kills, it was Provo Bob. Yes, four kills to him, three kills to the AMX M449, two kills to the SU-130PM to Carnarvon, who managed to get a Spartan, and two kills as well to the 50TP, the 112, and the Borsig on the enemy team. 
When it came to base XP, yes, it's Provo Bob again, so he's got the top in all three columns. 1,112, and he was the only player to get over 1,000 base XP. 790 to the VK7501K, and 776, I think that is. My eyesight is getting poor, uh, but then it's, it's allowed to because I'm old. <laughs> to the Carnarvon, and uh, let's have a look at detail. 11 shots fired, 9 direct hits, 5 penetrations, damage of 4,499 hit points, of which 865 were at more than 300 metres. He received 9 hits from the enemy in that game, 2 of them were penetrations, 7 non-penetrations, and 1,920 hit points of damage blocked by armour. He spotted um, no vehicles, actually, damaged 5 of the enemy, killed 4, and... He earned 56,435 credits, got 28,217 from personal reserves. That brought up a total of 84,652. And after repair and ammunition resupply, he took away 25,288 credits profit. But it would have been a lot higher if he'd actually been firing HE on some of those occasions, because some of the shots he fired, he didn't get a pen. And he should have got a pen if he'd actually, or not a pen, but he should have done a lot of damage if he'd fired the HE round. And he would have had at least one more kill because I'm certain he would have taken up that M449 with one of those shots. And so he took away a profit, but it could have been higher. 30 bonds from the battle, 1,668 XP, and there was no multipliers, so that's all the experience points he took away. So it's a reasonable game in the T95 for Provo Bob. Could have been a lot better if he'd chosen the right ammunition, but he loaded APCR from the start and started spamming gold at the enemy as much as he could. And that's not always a good choice. So I much prefer to go into battle and just keep playing with standard AP rounds or standard HE rounds and only resort to the APCR. If I come across a tank, I just simply cannot penetrate any other way. And if I can't penetrate him with APCR, even finding any weak spot on them whatsoever, I'll just go back to using the HE, or I'll try and find a way that I can get him to meet another tank who does have the penetration to get through him by tracking him and holding him there until somebody else can kill him. But uh, yes, if you fire APCR right from the start, all you're going to do is empty your wallet at the enemy. Not a good choice. So Provo Bob, do think about using the other keys because... Uh, I think standard AP would have worked on a lot of those enemy, and I think the HE would have been even better on some of them. So if you enjoyed that replay, please give this video a like and do subscribe to our channel. And thanks for watching.